The island of Santa Marta is not very much different from any of the other smaller islands in the Caribbean. Towering mountains, white gold beaches, coconut palms, and hot tropical sun. It has a population of about 100,000, nine-tenths of it colored or of mixed blood. Its main industry is raising sugar, copra, cocoa, and exporting them. Originally a French island, its laborers were brought in slave ships from the Gold Coast of Africa four and a half centuries ago. And now, it is a British crown colony. Well, that about sums up all the facts you'll find in the tourist guides, Mr. Bradshaw. Of course, as a journalist, you'll want to see as much of our island as possible. If you're in doubt about anything, get in touch with Colonel Whittingham here. Nothing like being on the right side of the police, eh, Colonel? <laughs> Quite so. Dennis. Yeah? Have you arranged for Mr. Bradshaw's hotel? The St. James. Good. Very comfortable, the St. James. Excellent bar. I don't drink, sir. Oh. Doctor's orders. Correct. Well, we'll be seeing you this afternoon at the reception. Thank you, Your Excellency. Oh, Your Excellency, just one more question. I'm very interested in the new constitution that's been given to the islands. Do you think the West Indian is ready to govern himself? When you get to know the island better, Mr. Bradshaw, I shall be glad to discuss it with you. Good day, sir. Is there much discontent in the islands, Colonel? Crime is my business, Mr. Bradshaw, not politics. Want some help? Yes. Well, call somebody. To Maxwell, how nice. I didn't expect you until later. I won't be a minute. I'll wait. Please, dear, I'm hot and sticky. Did you see your father? We lunched at the club. Mother's coming back tomorrow from Barbados. My sister tell you? Oh, there you are. Here are the towels. Thanks, dear. Well, I'm off for a shower. Tell Mavis we'll see you at H.E.'s party. Okay. How was the beach? Oh, fun. Anybody there I know? Oh, you know, the usual bunch. What time's the party at Government House? The invitation said 5.30. You haven't changed the smoking Egyptian cigarettes, have you? No, why? You better run along. You gonna meet Mother at the plane tomorrow? No, Daddy's going. Why don't you go with him? She'd prefer to have you. Well. Tell Sylvia that I'll see her later. Turn the invitation. 
invitation say? 5.30. Do we have to go? I'd rather stay out here at Bellefontaine. Well, we can't very well not go. After all, it's protocol. Besides, it's a party to welcome Lord Templeton's only son and heir. What's his name? Who? The governor's son. Ewan, I think. I saw his picture in the Tatler. Pass me a tissue, would you, darling? He's been stationed in the Middle East for the last 18 months. This will be a holiday for him. He's going up to Oxford in the autumn. You seem to know a great deal about him. Well, you know the island. A male, young, white, unmarried, titled, and comparatively rich. Good heavens, what else do you think the girls would talk about? Oh, darling, you're not jealous, are you? A bit. Well, whatever of. Anybody with all those virtues? It's the penalty for being so much in love with you. That's sweet. Anybody out of the house today? Out of the house? While I was in town? No, not that I know of. Why? I just wanted. Darling, you must get dressed. We'll never get to the party. captain's our best cricket team, my son Ewan. I know exactly how young Templeton feels. 18 months military duty in the Middle East. Desert, fleas. Not a woman in my old. How do you do? How are you? No need for you to stand guard, my boy. I'll hold the fort. You start campaigning. Thank you, sir. No, I can't go in. I haven't been invited. I can't crash a party at Government House. But you can, if you're the David Boyer. I'll say you're my cousin. What difference does it make? It makes a difference to me. If I go in, I go in as Margot Seaton. If I have to leave, I leave as Margot Seaton. Sorry with me. That's the way you want it. Well, it may get you into trouble with the Governor. Me? In trouble with the Governor? Templeton needs me much more than I need him. Do you really want me to go? Yes, I do. You're an idiot to be afraid of those people up there. What for? Am I getting out of that driveway? We're going in. All right, but I warn you, you may regret it. What a representative of girls in their early 20s drink at the beach in Santa Marta, Colonel? Rum swizzles, I believe. Rum swizzles. Tomorrow afternoon, then? With a thermos full of rum swizzles. Excuse me, there's my father. Ah, there you are. I was beginning to think my secretary had forgotten to invite you. Your Excellency, Miss Margot Seaton. How do you do? Will you excuse me? There's an American journalist here I'd like you to meet. I'm sure you've explained how dangerous I am. Of course. Our homegrown revolutionary. The press is a nuisance, but it exists. And I believe in cooperating with what exists. I'm Dennis Archer, the governor's aide. Pleased I haven't seen you before. Maybe it's because you buy your toothpaste at the wrong drugstore. What should I take that to mean? I work at the Von Marchi drugstore. Oh, in that case, I shall change my patronage. You're wondering what I'm doing here, aren't you? Well, uh... Well, I wasn't invited. Uh, David Boyer dared me to come. I don't like being dared. I see. Next time, I shall see that you are properly invited. <laughs> the colonel's been telling me about David Boyer. Oh, has he? 
Yes, there's a man with real power. Notice the very special treatment His Excellency is giving him. Strange. In all the years I've lived on this island, I've never met him. Oh, I have. He used to work in the kitchens at the St. James Hotel when we used to live there. And I was very, very young. He's gone far since then. Too far. Why don't you take up Boyer's challenge? What do you mean? Well, this new constitution, Boyer's going to try and capture the legislature at the next general election. Seems to me some of you planters should go in for politics rather quickly. Fight him at the polls, stand for election. Me? Yes, why not you? The flurry name means a great deal on the island. Everyone respects your father, even the West. You stand an excellent chance of winning. Can you offer some smoke, please? Only on special occasion. They're Egyptian, aren't they? Yes, I have the mates mean Cara. They're very difficult to get here. My childhood wasn't very much different from any of the other children who I grew up with. It was always the same story. Rum and ginger, please. No opportunity for anything. No one to tell, pay any attention. That's when I began organizing. One of the most important fights is against tradition. This island's shackled with traditions. Would you agree with that, Mr. Flory? What? Mr. Boy here says he thinks the island is bound with tradition. What would Mr. Boy have us do? Forget them? Mr. Flory speaks as if traditions belong only to him. We have ours, too. I'd be the last to deny him his traditions. Which ones, Mr. Flory? The ones we got on the slave ships? Or in the cane fields working like beasts? Or the ones we have now? The ones we're making every day, despite the slave ships and the cane fields? No, Mr. Bradshaw. We don't intend to live the way our fathers did. Your father, if I remember correctly, worked on my father's plantation. Till the day he died. He was well taken care of, whether he's sick or not, whether he worked or not. That was charity, Mr. Fleury. What we want is equality. What I want is a drink. How about you, Maxwell? No, I won't have one. Uh, this, this headache. Do you mind if we go? No, but we've only just arrived. We're all going out to the club later. I told Sylvia I wasn't up to this party. We can be social some other time. Well, excuse us, Mavis, Mr. Bradshaw, Colonel. It's good to see you, David Boyer. It's nice seeing you again, Miss Norman. It's been a long time. Yes. As a matter of fact, you were 12 years old at the time. It was a party given for the children out of St. James' Lawn. And you were in a pride. Oh, I did? What for? The obstacle race. I haven't been much of a prize winner since. As a matter of fact, I remember watching you from the kitchen window. It wasn't much of a prize. Lamb's Tales from Shakespeare. You won bigger. Perhaps. Oh, excuse me. Just one more question, Mr. Boyer. What would you say is the most important problem on the island? Color, Mr. Bradshaw. Color. Excuse me. We'd better take the sea road. Aren't you coming? I feel like staying here for a while. Beautiful night, don't you think? What sort of a mood are you in now? So you and your friend Carson think I ought to go into politics? I think what you did at the party was stupid, deliberately insulting David Boyer that way. He can be dangerous. So can I. Forget Boyle, let's talk about Carson. He's interesting, don't you think? War record, bachelor, sort of thing that women go for. Hillary is nice. If I were a woman, I'd prefer Carson to you and Templeton. But it was you and all the girls chased after. Too bad you can't try your luck with him. I know you. You envy Jocelyn or any other girl who's free because you wish you were. 
That's true, isn't it? Maxwell, stop it. You'll tear my dress. Do you know? I've never torn a dress of yours. <gasps> Take me home. Home? Women get bored making love in the same room. A change of scenery helps. Stop it. Tell me about Egypt. Was it madly dull? Too many pyramids. <laughs> Not enough girls? None to write home about. You think there'll be any punch left in that thermos? Mm-hmm. What's your life like here, Gay? Not very. This is a small island and there's a dozen girls like myself. And not enough men. Oh, the boats come in sometimes. Tourists. Sailors. Ever think of getting away? Constantly. Where? Oh, I don't know. Paris. London. It doesn't really matter. You know, you get awfully tired of all this sun. What will you do when you leave Oxford? I've got a seat waiting for me in the House of Lords. Ah, I forgot. You have a title. Don't say it like that. You know, there was a corporal in the army who used to take a peculiar pleasure out of reading my name out in full. Private the Honorable Lord Templeton, E.J., now for six months free, you know it. <laughs> I suppose it did sound funny. When I was in Egypt, I used to lie out on the beach, close my eyes, and make a prayer to Allah. Please, Allah, I'd say. When I open my eyes, may there be a pretty girl lying on the sand next to me. Thank you, Allah. Some toothpaste. What kind? Hey, one of those will do. The large or the small? What's the difference in price? The large is 36, the small is 24. Uh, I'll take the large. Miss Seaton, are you going to the nurse's dance with anyone? David Boyer asked me. And if I asked you? Are you? I'm afraid you'll have to find someone to take your place. As a matter of fact, I, uh, I have an official invitation here. What does it say? It says His Excellency the Governor requests the pleasure of Miss Margot Seaton's company at his table on Tuesday, March the 15th at 8 p.m. I'll call for you myself. You forgot your change. Have I finished with my wife yet? Sorry, your wife is not here. She was here early today, but her appointment is for tomorrow. Oh, uh, did she say where she was going? No.
darling, I'm sorry. Have you been waiting long? I told Maxwell I'd be at the hairdressers, and then it turned out my appointment wasn't until tomorrow. Bit of luck your wife ran into me. Hillary's been awfully sweet. I insist he come shopping with me. Was it very boring? Well, they say women have only two passions, and one of them shopping. What did you buy? A bikini. <laughs> it's really something, isn't it? Right. You better rope off the beach, old man, when she wears it. We better be going. Lucky shot running into Hillary Carson, wasn't it? Yes. Do you still smoke those cigarettes of his? What cigarettes? You remember those fancy gold-tipped ones that he has made up from in Cairo? Perhaps that's what I need to be more successful with my own wife. A special brand of tobacco. I don't know what you're talking about. <gasps> You're a friend of David Boyer's. Yes, I am. He's a young man for whom I promise I have a brilliant future. You must all be very proud of him. Well, that's what he keeps telling us. He should be. <laughs> Dennis tells me you're working at the Bon Marché Pharmacy. Dennis? Dennis Archer, my ADC. Oh, yes. Confidentially, he's not much of an ADC. You know, odd sort of fellow. Writes books. He's very ambitious. I like him. I'm very ambitious, too. Uh, I'm a, a stenographer. I've been taking shorthand, typing. I'm a qualified stenographer. I suppose you haven't a place for me. Well... I had no idea you danced so well. Thank you, Miss Eden. Thank you, Your Excellency. It's a great honor to dance for the company. Yes. Now I know all about you. Oh? What did he say? Odd fellow writes books. <laughs> Confidentially, you're not a very good ADC. You're too ambitious, but he likes you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Don't go away. I'll be back. I won't go away. So that's the reason you didn't go to the nurse's ball with me, huh? I warned you, didn't I? About what? That you might regret making me go to the governor's party. Aren't you drinking? You do drink champagne, don't you? I mean, it's... <laughs> it's not forbidden to union officials, is it? No. I don't think so. All right, then. Come along, then. Champagne goes awfully quickly at parties. Excuse me, ladies. Mr. Boy is having champagne, too. I was asking the police about you. The police? Mm. Kittle Whittingham. We were sitting at the same table. What did the colonel have to say? Young chap, no background, fighting his way. No idea where he wants to go except us. The colonel also seems to think you like the idea of your own importance. The colonel seems to think. What do you think? I don't know. Then why are you trying to find out? <laughs> I don't know that either. <laughs> Does it make any difference, having an aim in life? An aim? Mm, not just floating about, tea at five, dinner at eight, Tuesdays at the hairdressers. Having, oh, I used another word for it, uh, a cause. 
That should depend a great deal on the person, I should imagine. You think I'm rather useless, don't you? Parasitic, that all women of my kind are. Oh, no, it's true that we don't know anything. Oh, the ground rules for tennis, a recipe for shrimp curry, a, a little charity in nursing, but nothing very important. I wish there were something worthwhile I could learn about people, about... There's a great deal to learn right here on this island. If you really mean it. It used to be the summer house where the governor's wives did their sewing. I told the governor I'd like somewhere to do my writing, and, uh... Oh, is this what you're writing? Yes. Is it a novel? Sort of. What's it about? Oh, people and places. It begins in London and then... Goes on to Hong Kong, Cairo, Malta, the West Indies. Is that where it ends? I haven't finished it yet. May I read it sometime? If you really want to. Oh, yes, I do. I tried writing here the night after I met you at the garden party. Yes? I couldn't get a sentence straight. I just sat here, thinking about you. It's a bad sign. Is it? No, somewhere, someone once said that there's always a point at the beginning of a love affair where a man can draw back where he's still safe. Well, is that what you want to be? Safe? I've been in love. Funny. I don't know anything about you. Well, what would you like to know? All about you. Everything. Well, there really isn't very much to tell. I've lived in these islands all my life. Trinidad, Fort de France, Saramara. Does the gramophone work? Yes. Do you want me to play it? Yes. with you, don't you? Yes. You knew from the first, didn't you? Yes. the trip? Pleasant. How's Sylvia? Pretty, as always. Brought the plantation accounts. Thanks. I have a bit of news. I've decided to stand for the legislature in the next election. Why? Why not? There's no good our sitting around saying the island's going to the dogs and not doing anything about it. Right, Mother? I wasn't even aware the island was going to the dogs. Boyer's got a great deal of influence in your district. Are you afraid of Boyer, too? He represents the people, or they think he does. It amounts to the same thing. You don't think I have a chance of winning, do you? No. 
Well, I do. I'm not afraid of Boyer. I'm not afraid of opposing him. Is there something to drink? I'd like a sour. All right. Your father and I were talking about taking Jocelyn to England for a while. It's death for a young girl like her in this island. She ought to have the chance of meeting the right people, don't you think? Do you think he'd ever trust me to run the estate single-handed? Your father felt like that about the election because he was concerned for you. What a defeat might mean to you. Was he? I don't remember his ever being concerned about me before. I can't remember his ever worrying whether or not I went to England, whether I ever had a chance to meet the right people. All I've ever had is this dreary island. Oh, no. You're not being fair. Fair? I'm being truthful. I know what people say. I know what people think. I know what you think. I know what he thinks. I never lived up to the great Fleury name. But I might have if I'd gone to Oxford and Eton, like Arthur did. Many things might have been different, but instead you sent me to school here with a lot of colored brats. All I ever heard about was Arthur, how well he was doing, what good reports you had. That's who father cared about. Elder son, apple of his eye. Arthur's dead. No, he's not dead. He's alive. Always will be for him, and I'll always live in his shadow. Charming Arthur, modest Arthur, and then Arthur, dead in the war, a hero. Max will be quiet, will you? All right, father was kind. He gave Sylvia and me Bellefontaine as a wedding present. A decaying house out on the godforsaken tip of the island. And I'm supposed to be grateful for being Julian Fleury's son. I'd have been better off if I'd been born black. Maxwell! Here's a whiskey sour. Care for a drink? Love one. Give us one of those red ones, will you? Oh, look. They want some, too. All right. Here, want this? Oh, and here's another little girl. You come right in and have one. Here you are. Got that? And how about these girls? And don't forget me. Right. Give us another one, will you? What was that all about? There once was a man, don't remember who, drew 200 different classifications of mixed blood on this island. Well, the children don't seem to know about it yet, do they? Not yet. You lived here all your life, but I'm sure I'll show you a part of this island that you've never seen before. Cutting, huh? Yes. yes. All right, see you later. All right. all right. Well, they all seem to know you. That's my business. I was born in this village. There's the old schoolhouse. Roof still leaks, timber still rotten. 
There'll be a new one there next year. Back to school. <laughs> well, then, they're all very proud of David Boyer. They'll be proud of have a name, really. It's a song the tourists never hear. It's a word chant. When the catch is bad, it's sad. And when it's good, well, it's like champagne. Just a little fast, a lead man holler. Go! All men follow. Down you go for a working dollar. Yes, you holler. Go! All men follow. Down you go for a working dollar. Swing out left and you bring her wide. Lean a bit to your starboard side. Pull her right in a little more to port. Slack up, men, while you hold a short. A lead man holler, yo! All men follow. Down you go for a working dollar. Yes, you holler, yo! All men follow. Down you go for a working dollar. Like to tell you about yesterday. Work right well, I am proud to say. I want every man to try his will and make yesterday look like you were standing still. A lead man holler, yo! All men follow, down you go for a working dollar. Yes, he holler, yo! All men follow, down you go for a working dollar. They're making masks for carnival. You should really see them then, the little towns. Thank <laughs> you. 
Maxwell is staying in town. The key should be in a flower pot on the veranda. I suppose the servants are all in the village running mask. Lasts here. The worms eat right through the furniture. How about some tea? It's a very good idea. Sylvia's very wasteful. We'll probably find a cake going quietly stale in the bread bin. Oh, would you mind opening the shutters and letting some air in? I think we should go. I'll put the key back. I hate leaving here. Your brother's very lucky to have a place like this all his own. Ready? me to drive. It's Maxwell's car. It's got its idiosyncrasies, and I know them. I suppose that's one of them. You wait. It's got others. Let me see. 
Just a moment. Well, now, I hate to tell you this, but your rotor arm's gone. What? Your rotor arm. Oh, that's impossible. Well, come and look. It's been taken out. Is this a carnival idea of humor? It's somebody's idea of something. What do you think we should do now? Telephone your father? I think we better. Try again. It's carnival. The girl at the exchange may be on a jack. The line's dead. It's all right here. No electricity. The rotor arm gone, and now this. Three times can't be a coincidence. What do you mean? Grudges get paid off at Carnival. Against you? Me? Or my father? Maxwell's car is Maxwell's house now, too. What's that? Drums in the village. They carry for miles. We need a drink. Yes, we do, don't we? Won't they worry at your father's? No. It's carnival. They won't expect me for hours. I think the moon's up. Shall we have a look at it? can't get back. Well, the servants will be here in the morning. I can send one of them to telephone from the police station. At least I'm not in Egypt. Hungry? I noticed half a chicken pie in the icebox. Really? We might as well have supper. By moonlight. What about rooms? If they don't come for us, we shall have to stay. Any particular one you prefer? Why don't we toss a coin? Heads? Heads it is. Which? on the right. I've never slept in it and I've always wanted to ever since I was a child. It has a lovely view. There's a clock on the mantelpiece and a picture between the bookshelves. And I promised myself I'd sleep in it on my 17th birthday, but I never have, not once. Wasn't it lucky I won the toss? <laughs> There's bound to be some sort of gossip. Why? Oh, my dear, you can hardly expect them not to with such a wonderful opportunity. Ewan slept in here. I'm quite sure that Ewan was a gentleman. I was simply concerned with the thought that Lord Templeton might find himself involved in unpleasantness. Mrs. Florey. Hmm? I wonder if you'd be kind enough to give me an opinion. 
Do you think it would be a good idea for someone like myself to be married here or in England? Why? I don't quite know. I think England might be quite nice, but it might be more fun here. You know, be a sort of holiday, another carnival, sort of. Ewan, you know, you don't have to. This isn't England and Mother isn't Queen Victoria. What am I supposed to tell my father? Your father? Yes. I spoke to him on the phone and I said, You are, aren't you? I am what? In love with me. Because that's what I told my father on the... I mean, I, I said I was in love with you and I, I assumed you were with me. What did he say? Couldn't wish me a happier fate. You know, it's not 24 hours since we drove to Bellefontaine. I know. You were going to Oxford. This was just a short vacation. Marriage isn't what you want, Ewan. Well, it's true that when I first came here, I wasn't sort of looking for anything that went deep. You know, a good time, that was all I wanted. But this morning when we drove back into town, I thought... If I lost you now, I'd be a large fool. As a matter of fact, I have an odd feeling, you know, that my life wouldn't be, wouldn't be sort of empty if I went back to England and you weren't there to go with me. Morning. morning. Good morning. Your daughter's just been proposed to, Mr. Flurry. By whom? Me, I'm afraid. Ewan, would you mind leaving? I'd like to talk to my parents alone. See you later. Bye. Bye. If you're in love with him, I see no reason why you shouldn't accept him. After all, you won't be any hindrance as far as his going up to Oxford and his career is concerned. You haven't said yet whether you are in love with him. Oh. Yes, I think so. I mean, very much. But it's not quite that simple. Ewan has a name, he has duties and obligations. I have to be quite certain. Is there any reason why I shouldn't marry him? What do you mean? What reason could there be? Daddy? Is there any reason why I shouldn't marry Ewan? No. There's no good reason why you shouldn't marry him. Put it down there. Oh, hello, Bradshaw. Oh, hello, Mr. Oh. Flory. Hot, isn't it? The Flurry family is a perfect example of the problems faced by many of the old families on this island. For 300 years, there's been marriage and intermarriage which nobody's sure of their precise ancestry. But a veil of secrecy, whispers and innuendo has been drawn across this problem. Julian Flurry was brought up in England. A distinguished Wessex family was delighted 35 years ago when he proposed marriage to their youngest daughter. Presumably, they did not know that Julian Flurry's mother, who died in childbirth, was a Jamaican with colored ancestry. 
Is it true? It's true. What were you lashing out at when you tried to slap me? Your own guilt? Your betrayal of us? Betrayal? Your mother never knew. She knew. Didn't your mother? Yes, I knew. But how? An anonymous letter. Came years ago. And you never mentioned it? I saw no reason to. I wanted to keep things as they were. Faithful wife, noble mother. Maxwell, stop it. How do you expect him to feel? How do you think I feel? To believe that you belong to one kind of a world and then suddenly... When I asked you if there was any reason why I shouldn't marry you and you said no. I said there was no good reason. How can you say that? You and Zare to a title. Can you picture a black man sitting in the House of Lords if we had a son? There's no need to exaggerate. My mother was three quarters white. I've only one sixteenth of colored blood. The chances are your children will be completely white. Bradshaw's right. All this whispering, all this secrecy. How shall I face it here? Will you listen to me quietly for a minute? At the start of any misfortune, one always feels that the end of the world has come. Well, the end of mine has. Perhaps I ought to leave this island, take Sylvia with me, make a fresh start somewhere. You think that'd be best? Do I have any other choice? I can see myself walking into the club. Anybody for tennis? There's Fleury. He's perfect for mixed doubles. His grandmother was a bit on the dark side, you know. Your roots are here. Your life is here. Oh, it's easy to talk about making a fresh start, but what would you do? Where would you go? What do the Fleurys know except how to run a plantation? Nothing. Think it over. Talk to Sylvia. Think it over. Talk no. to Sylvia. Above all, we must keep our heads. The great thing is to do nothing hasty. Behave as though nothing extraordinary has happened. Otherwise, people will say, Oh, look at the flurries. <laughs> they dare hold their heads up in public. Go to the club tonight. Behave naturally. Don't avoid people and uh, don't send them too many drinks. No, I won't come. I don't want it to look as if the clan was mustering in force. But behave as though nothing has happened. Lunch is ready, ma'am. Thank you, Mary. Congratulations. That was a fine series of articles, the best things I've read about the island. As for that one today, that was, that was the goods. You said things that needed saying. From my point of view, I can't tell you how grateful I am. In what way? In every way. I've not been trusted. The people here, West Indian, they thought of me as a flurry, a feudal planter, bought their ancestors in the marketplace. But now, I'm standing for the legislature. Why not? I combined black and white, the new and the old. I've got a foot in both camps. And your article gave me the guts that I needed. What'll it be, gentlemen? A rum and uh, ginger, two of them. Uh, just water. I didn't see this before, but now I can look out of those faces and I can say to them, my grandmother was of African ancestry. She came over in a slave trader just as yours did. Yes, I can say to them, I'm one of you now. Cheers, cheers. talk to you. You do? Who the devil are you? Fleury. Maxwell Fleury. Yeah? Oh, so you are. 
What do you want to do, make a contribution to the Bellefontaine Fund? What? Fund, the Bellefontaine Fund. I want to talk to you, alone. There's something you need settling between us. I can't think of what. Anyway, whatever it is, let's do it inside. Expecting a girl? A girl? What would I want with a girl? Excuse me. Shall we go in here? You make your whiskey? No. I don't believe in chaps drinking themselves to death. Just leave that for retired colonels. Remember that song? hospital in Tripoli during the war. My wife fell in love with a Polish musician and thought that the best thing for both of us was a quick divorce. What's that supposed to mean? I mean, nothing. It's just a fact. Second chance. That's what a man needs, a blasted second chance. Well, what was it needed settling? I want you to leave my wife alone. Your wife? I'm not a fool. Trouble is, you weren't smart enough. The whole place stank of those fancy cigarettes of yours. You out of your mind? I've had as much as I can take from you and from this island, you understand? Stay away from my wife. Look here, I'm fed up with idiots. Are you suggesting I've been I'm making I'm not suggesting passes? anything. I'm just telling you. Well, you can write it. Well, untell it and apologize. And get this into your stupid skull. I don't make passes at wives of acquaintances, and I don't share my women. And even if I did, I wouldn't take something from someone like you with a tar brush rubbed across his face. <laughs>
I suppose there's no doubt about it being murder. No, not the slightest. Anyone in England to whom we could send a cable? Not that I know of, sir. Oh, we could, of course, put a notice in the Times. Yes, that's the least we can do. Was there a woman in the case, do you think? Politics? No. A thief, then? All right, that's your affair. I won't meddle. It seems a bit sad, though, a chap's life ending like that. You'll see to it, won't you, that he's put under with full military honors. Of course, sir. That we all know. Yes, that's all. Goodbye, Colonel. I suppose this business of Bradshaw's article is all over Jamestown, that and Carson's death. Yes, sir. What's your opinion, Dennis? About what, sir? Having the wrong sort of grandmother. Well, um, it's difficult to pick one's ancestors, sir. Yes, it is, isn't it? Send a girl in, will you? I want to dictate a note to Whitehall. Right, sir. The governor has some dictation. Would you go into him? I finished the letter to Landon. Is it all right? I've never known anyone like you. I never suspected there could be anything like this. You're not wearing it. Well, should I here in the office? Wear it. Here, let me. You didn't look at the letter. The letter? It's perfect. Jocelyn, I've got the car. Would you like to come for a drive? Why don't you, Jocelyn? We'll go on alone. Well, I, I have to go past the house and change my clothes. All right. Hello, Colonel. Hello. Mr. Bradshaw. Appalling thing. Carson. He and I were quite good friends. I can't understand how it happened. Is there anyone you suspect, Colonel Whittingham? Now, Mrs. Flory, you know policemen. They suspect everybody. What time did it happen? The coroner puts it at about 10. That's odd. I went to the club after I left Father's. I was worrying about Bradshaw's article, how they'd take it. I may have passed Carson's house at the very moment. Oh, how awful. You might have saved his life. A few minutes earlier, I might have met him in the street. We'd have stopped and talked. He'd have asked me in for a drink. And then we'd have found this... I suppose it was a thief. Quite likely. Maxwell, on your way to the club, Bradshaw mentioned the time, and it occurred to me that you might have passed Carson's house. Uh, did you see anybody hanging about outside? See anybody? No. There was a car that drove by afterward. Afterward? After what? After I'd passed Carson's house. I'm sorry I can't be of more help, Colonel. Do you think she'll care, Colonel? Who? The ex, Mrs. Carson. He was very much in love with her, you know. No, I couldn't say. Poor man. He came out here with such high hopes. Yeah. Well, a chap can't pick the way he'll die, or we'd all do better at it. Goodbye, Colonel. Sir. Right out you get. I steal nothing, Colonel, sir. I find purse in Canefield. No money in purse. I keep purse. 
Why not keep purse kernels, sir? Now, don't fuss. Nobody's blaming you. You just show me where you found that purse, and then you can go home. What, no further than that? No, Colonel, sir. I found the purse right here. All right. All right, bring it back. All right, start it up. No, no, you stay there. Okay, back again. Drive him to his village. Here, yeah, this will make up for the day's work you lost. Thank you, sir. Everything okay, quite enough, sir? Fine. Three. Oh, hello, Maxwell. Hello, Mavis. Hello, darling. There's some news in the paper. Oh, what is it? They found the wallet. What wallet? Carson's wallet. Here. Yeah, let me see. Would you like a drink? Yes, I would. How about you, Mavis? Love one. Poor Hillary. That's all they're talking about at the club. H.E. will probably get a cable from the colonial office. They're worried about the tourist trade, of course. There is that American newspaper man here. Well, there's one thing, sure. It is a small island. He can't run far, whoever did it. Tell Sylvia I had to go into town. Give me six two one. Yes. Just hold on a minute. Uh, never mind. Good morning, Maxwell. Anything I can do for you? I was wondering, Colonel, if you'd be kind enough to chairman a meeting up in my district next week. I'm standing for election. Glad to. Thank S you. Sylvia, all right? Yes, fine. Good. Uh, I see the papers say you found Carson's wallet. Yes. Yes, Carson's papers were in it. That's how we identified him. That was stupid. What? Leaving the papers. At least I'd say it was stupid. Would you? Huh. I'd say too clever. I ran into Bradshaw. He said it was a housebreaker. Was he really? I, I wonder why. Is there any other possibility? Well, a policeman has to keep his eyes open, you know. A chap my age can't afford to miss a bet particularly with the governor all stirred up. You mean it might have been made to look like a thieves have they work? My dear fellow, how would I know? There are 15 possibilities. I'm in the dark. Which is the likeliest? Never have preconceptions, my boy. Open mind. That's the thing. <laughs> you mustn't look too disappointed. The work gets done, never fear. Let's say I guessed who the murderer is. A guess, mind you, no more. But it, it wouldn't do me the slightest bit of good, my dear fellow, not the slightest. A court wants proof. So I, I just wait. Patience, my boy, that's the ticket. Yes, I know that sounds, sounds dull to you impatient chaps, but that's police work. Oh, he'll probably play into my hands, whoever the fellow is. I'm in no hurry. You know, I, I said something like that to a bloke once. I can't remember who. Oh, middle-aged, my boy, no memory at all. Oh, yes, yes, in BG. That's where it was, yeah. Yes, forgery. What put me onto my man was a, a slip he made. A tiny one, hardly knows it. The chap said afterward instead of after. Get the point? 
Absolutely the key. No. No, probably not. I suppose I didn't explain it properly. Afterward. That's what gave me the clue. Afterward? Absolutely, my dear fellow. That's what put me on the scent. I'm glad you dropped by. Happy to do that chairman thing for you. You ring me up the day you need it. Cheerio. Thank you. Why did you choose this place to me? This plantation used to belong to my family. It was first on the island. I wanted you to see it. Your family? I didn't know that. It was destroyed during a slave uprising in 1843 during the French rule. I wonder what could have caused it. Any number of reasons. A single insult, a whipping, a girl. Who knows? Do you know what happened to the owners? That was more than a hundred years ago. And now you're here, and I'm here. Do you still feel that anyone whose skin is different from yours is an enemy? Do you think I do? I don't know. At carnival time, my brother-in-law's car was damaged. His telephone wires cut. You hate Maxwell, don't you? You think of him as an enemy? I think of him as a snob. As an arrogant plantation owner. Is that the reason why you almost didn't get here? Or did they tell you that you shouldn't be seen with me? That I'm an upstart, and nobody who's gotten control of the Union. That I'm a dangerous man who should be watched carefully. You don't suppose I listen to them? I only believe in what I see and what I know. Do you know what they say about me? Poor Mavis Norman, always getting into trouble. Always picking the wrong man. me as an enemy? No. What are you thinking? That you feel you're lost, but you're not. Because you're looking for something real. And as long as you're looking for something real, you're not lost. I suppose you and your father discussed that article of Bradshaw's? Of course. What did he say? Well, he said we ought to announce our engagement at once and then have a celebration party. When did he say that? Last night when he got back from Guyana. And what did he say about our getting married? First things first, he said. We could talk later about what people in Victorian homes might call naming the day. How neat. What? Your father's no fool. I thought it was very decent of him. What else could he say? It wouldn't be diplomatic, would it, for the governor to offend the whole colored population of Santa Marta? Engaged. And then no one can say that G.H. draws a color line. Of course, marriage. I believe... 
My father's never lied to me. Do you think he'd run the risk of having a grandson? An eventual heir who's part Negro? He'll see to it that you go back to England. Not without you. It doesn't matter. The marriage isn't important anyway. Well, Jocelyn, we've got to get this clear. Bradshaw's article won't mean it's anything clear. as far as... It's perfectly clear. A romance. Isn't that what you wanted? Eighteen months was such a long time in Egypt. And without a girl... Jocelyn, you've got to listen to me. Believe me, when we're back in England, this I won't mean a... I to hear about England. Whatever happens, I want you to remember one thing. You'll never be more loved than you are right now. Almost eight. I think we should go. We're going to be very happy in London, you know. Forever and ever. Of course. Forever and ever. Have you any rock hind? Yes, we have. I'll take your rock hind. Yes. Give me some rock hind. Give me some rock hind. Give me some rock hind. Uh, fish for dinner? Rock hind. And get it cheap here. Oh, I must tell my wife. Send it up to my house. That election meeting of yours is all set, I hear. Yes, you're coming out there, aren't you? I'm counting on it. Anything new about Carson? I mean, the man who did it? I've come to the conclusion it was an accident. An accident? No, yes. unpremeditated. A quarrel, that's what it was. Last thing the poor devil wanted, Carson dead. If only he'd come to the police station right away, we might have smoothed it out. What a fool he was. A fool? Absolutely. You see, the chap who did it, I'm, I'm sorry for him. He's not strong enough to bear the burden of his guilt. Ever read a book called Crime and Punishment? No, why? Well, you should. It's about just this sort of thing. A man who's committed a crime and his relationship with a detective who knows he's committed it but still can't prove it. There's a... they have a... have a secret together. There's a... there's a deep bond between them. It's rather like a love affair because the detective is the only man in the world who understands it. And in his heart, the murderer wants to be found out by the detective. Now, this fellow in the Carson case, you know, what I'd like to do is to go up to him, take him by the arm, and tell him not to worry. I'll do my best for you, I want to say to him. I'm not, I'm not out to punish you. I'm not out to punish anyone. It's just that I've got to maintain law and order. But I mean you no harm. We'll, we'll get it fixed as manslaughter. That might mean only five years. And the, and the sentence could be remitted for good behavior. It might be only three years. I know that sounds a long time now, but three years passes very quickly. Now, you look back three years. Does it seem a long time? No, of course it doesn't. And after all, three years isn't such a big price to pay for your peace of mind. So come now, confess. Tell me. <laughs> well, that's what I'd like to say to the poor devil if he came to me. Well, I'll be seeing you. Oh, that book, Crime and Punishment, I'll send it over to you. When you get a chance, you read it. Yes.
Excuse me, I won't be a minute. Suggested you run for election. I never really thought that. I remember. It must have come to his mind that very moment because when he came out of the house that morning. He came out of the house? Yes. You knew Carson rather well, didn't you? Well? No, I, I wouldn't say well. Why? Why did he come out to the house? It had to do with the Bellefontaine Fund. The Bellefontaine Fund? Yes, he wanted to find out what sort of a gift your father wanted. It was intended to be some sort of token of his services to Santa Marta. He said, don't mention it to anybody, particularly Maxwell. It was intended as a surprise. That's all. That's all it was. Of course. What did you imagine it was? It's time to start. Attention, please. I'm here tonight as chairman of a meeting at which Mr. Maxwell Fleury, who is offering himself as your representative in the Legislative Council, will explain his position to you. Now, you all know Mr. Fleury. Few West Indian families bear a name as respected as his. Mr. Fleury. which I stand before you as candidate. Yours, Mr. Fleury. I will not speak to you from this paper. This paper is filled with words that come from my head. Now, I will try to speak to you with words that come from my heart. Many of you out, out there know me. You've cut my sugar cane and harvested my coffee crop. And yet I have not known you, and in this I failed, as I failed in other things. To deny this would be to deny truth. I'm, I will speak to you tonight only in truth. I've passed you in the fields or in the cocoa sheds, and you've been just a name or a face or a number in a book. And I've lived in a world through which you moved only as shadows to be feared or ignored. I've now lived in the two worlds of Santa Marta. I know how they both think, how they both feel. I also know that they cannot exist if they're cut off from each other by suspicion and fear, each in its own loneliness, as no human being can exist in his own loneliness. This bridge I can help you build. 
I ask for your faith, your trust. Do not deny them to me. I'll answer any questions from the floor. The floor is now open for questions. I have a few, Mr. Chairman. I was as moved by Mr. Fleury's speech as anyone else. And I agree when he says that the two worlds cannot exist separate from each other. The question I'd like to ask Mr. Fleury is this. Does he think that the only issue here is one of color? Is he saying that that is the reason why we should vote for him? Is he saying, vote for me because I am one of you? Is that what you're saying, Mr. Fleury? Because if you are, I would like to take that issue up with your permission, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fleury said he has existed in the two worlds of Santa Marta. Which do you think he represent? I would like to answer that. Well, then finish, Mr. Chairman. Would Mr. Fleury also answer this? You said that you came here tonight only to speak the truth. Wouldn't it also be true to say that the only reason that you seek the election is to revenge yourself upon the whites whom you now think despise you? That the only reason that you want to be black is because you're afraid that the white world will not let you be white anymore? That you want to use us, our votes, so that you can still rule in that world that you still belong to? And tell us another truth, Mr. Fleury. In your heart, deep down inside, don't you still think of us as slaves? As a stupid, ignorant people? That's a lie! No, Mr. Fleury, that is the truth. And the issue here is not just one of color. The issue here is who is really best fit to represent the people? Who knows them the best? Who feels for them the most? Who's really a part of them? Is it you, Mr. Fleury, or is it me? Now you may answer, Mr. Fleury. of you. I don't belong to you. I don't want to be one of you. I never did. All right, friends, the meeting's over. Let's go home. Gone. I must have left it. Lend me yours. Am I presentable now? Mm hmm. What was the name of the film you were supposed to see? Red Shoes. Oh. Was it good? A bit long. <laughs> good night, darling. Jocelyn, there's something I want to say. Darling, can't... It won't take long. I want us to be married before I go back to England. Why? Because I have an odd feeling that if we don't get married now, we never shall. You know, you're the most difficult person to get a wedding ring on. Am I? I'll try not to be.
late. I've been waiting for Maxwell to call. How's the film? A bit long. Mother, there's something I want to talk to you about. Is it a match? Frupo. You were saying? In about three months, I want to go to Canada. I'd like to start making the arrangements now. Canada? Why on earth do you want to go there? Because I'm pregnant. Does you and know? You're sure that you are? There isn't any doubt. Well, you're certainly calm about it. You might show some shame, some guilt. If it'll make you feel any happier, I feel quite guilty. I thought that Ewan's father wouldn't let us marry, so I settled for what there was. I thought, first of all, I'd go to Trinidad, and then I changed my mind. I think Canada's the best idea. I could have it adopted. It shouldn't be hard. There's only one thing. I shouldn't like Daddy to know. He's been through enough. That's why I need your help. My help? You care about appearances, what people will say. Thank you. Of course, you know that you behaved stupidly. You behaved like a peasant girl in the cane fields. Well, but I suppose that's neither here nor there. It's the future that matters. May I have another match? You might at least strike it. You're engaged. You can get married in a hurry. You've not quarreled with him. He says he wants to marry me when he goes back to England. I'm not marrying you, and... Why not? You're insane. You are still in love with him. Yes. Then what on earth is there to stop your marrying? I've told you the reason. Don't be ridiculous. The English peerage isn't that sacred. Think of you, and Think of the jokes that be made about it. You might have thought of that two months ago. I didn't know then about my Jamaican grandmother. Is that the only reason why you're refusing to marry him? It is. If you had the chance, if things were different... Oh, they're not. I know, I know, but supposing they were, would you give anything to marry him? Yes. Very well. I owe you this. You need have no qualms about marrying Ewan. There isn't a drop of African blood in your veins. My husband isn't your father. Isn't? No. Well, then who? That's immaterial. It's better you shouldn't know. He's completely English. You can rest assured of that. I shall tell Lord Templeton who he is. He has a right to know who will be the other grandfather of his grandchildren. Telling him will be the hardest thing I've ever had to do. It must be done. You may have your old-fashioned ideas. I must ask you for the same consideration you ask me. I'd rather your father I'd rather my husband didn't know. You were always so devoted. I never conceived the possibility of another man in your life. Children don't. They think mistakes are their privilege. Mother. I don't want you to talk to Lord Templeton. I don't want you to tell him anything. He should know. I'll tell you, and eventually. But I won't have you humiliate yourself for my sake. Or for Ewan's. Or even for Lord Templeton's.
Shall I put the car away, darling? No, I'll put it away later. Are you hungry? Not really. There's some cold lobster in the refrigerator and a bottle of champagne. We could have it upstairs. Wouldn't you like that? I suppose. You know what I was thinking on the way home? That I've never seen snow. Imagine being my age and never seeing snow. Oh, it'd be so wonderful to go someplace after Santa Marta where they have real blizzards. When did Whittingham send this over? Well, the other day. I forgot to mention it to you. Have you read it? Yes. The murderer confesses, I suppose. Yes. Is he married? The man in the book who does the murder? No, he's not married. Pity. I might have been tempted to read it if he were. Why? You wouldn't want to hurt his wife. You wouldn't want her ever to know about it and suffer on account of it. The detective knows, doesn't he? I mean, in the book. And the fellow who did it is in a trap and is closing in, getting tighter every day. No chance of ever getting out of it. What about that champagne you promised me? Were you jealous of Hilary Carson? Yes. I envied him because he was the kind of man I thought that I wanted to be and I couldn't. I thought you were attracted to him. Hilary Carson. I loved you. I thought you didn't love me. I thought that sooner or later you'd fall in love with some man who was better suited to you. I thought Carson was that kind of a man. Maxwell. Yes. You didn't have anything to do with it. Don't be foolish. You know that I'm incapable of killing a man. I'm going upstairs. I'll bring the champagne up. I'll be out in a moment. I wonder when Jocelyn's getting married. Funny, a few weeks ago, I'd have been envious of her. I'm in London, the big house, being Lady Templeton. Now it doesn't matter so much. Do hurry, darling. You know, I saw a film the other day about a little town in New England. In New England. That's where I'd like to live. The characters in the film lived in a little house and it had a wonderful kitchen with all sorts of gadgets. With a kitchen like that, you don't need servants. That's how I'd like to live. Not in some big old house built hundreds of years ago and getting dressed for a lonely dinner. See, that's the sort of woman you married. Maxwell! Maxwell! Darling, will you call Colonel Whittingham? And tell him that I'm coming down to see him right away.
I like this. I've resigned. The governor found out about us. Oh? Well, what did he say? He left the decision to me. Oh, he talked about the book, too. He was disturbed about that, also. But this is the best thing you've ever done. Even if it's true, he said, it isn't fair to those who have to stay on the island. Fair? It's true. It's so true and so good that it hurts. When are you leaving? Friday. What about you? You needn't worry. I'll, I'll be broke. There's nothing much I've saved here, and the book's a long way from being done. We've never looked ahead. We, we never discussed anything. We just lived from day to day. Is there something you want to discuss? Yes, there is. Life without you. Writing things you won't be the first to read. Feeling things we can't share. How long will it take you to pack? But I... Two hours. I don't have very much either. There's a plane leaves for England on Friday. I'll send a car for you. All right. You don't seem very surprised. But I'll go into England together. Before you go, I go. your attention, please. This is the final call for BWIA Viscount Flight 072 to New York, connecting with BOAC Monarch to London. Now loading. Do you mind if I don't wait till the plane goes? Sylvia's alone. Goodbye. Well, son, there they go. Poor Julian. Who'd have thought a son of his? What will the indictment be against Maxwell, Colonel? Well, we'll try and get it in as manslaughter, sir. I meant to have a talk with you and when he arrived. Father to son. But I never did. Now he's married. Goodbye, sir. There's a plane for England. In a girl's case, does it work the other way around? I mean, Dennis Archer marries Margot, Ewan marries Jocelyn, but when it's the other way around, does it make any difference? Out here, yes. How big is Santa Marta? It's 50 miles long. There are other countries. My skin is my country. Maybe the men. Look at Margot. At some cocktail party in Bloomsbury. Or at a literary tea. Well, they'd envy Dennis Archer. Their own wives look sort of dull when she walks into a room. But if I were to walk in with you, or a girl like you as my wife... Do you care what stupid and prejudiced people think? You've never had to fight stupidity or prejudice. Besides, I'd be a fool. Why? Because it would be inevitable. What would be? That night that she'd forget herself and call me a nigger. You can't mean that. You can't possibly mean that. No, I don't. Then why did you say it? Because here's my world. These are my people and this is where I belong. If I went to England, who would I be? What would I be? David Boyer. No. I'd be an exile in a polar hat. 
sipping tea, carrying our old umbrella, talking with all the other exiles about how much we could do if we were only there. But I'm here. I don't have to go. And even here, I'd be in your way, wouldn't I? Yes, you would be in my way. Besides, they'd never understand. Who wouldn't? My own people. They'd feel I betrayed them. I have no choice. You're like a rock. Yes, I'm very deep right here. My people have their freedom. They've got a vote. They've got a power now. And I've got to show them how to use it. Run through here in Santa Marta, or go to St. Kitts and Barbados and Grenada, and the whole archipelago. Shall I tell you why you won't go to England? You don't want that power for your people. You want it for yourself. You're afraid to go there because you won't have it anymore. Do you really mean that? I wanted to admire you, to feel that you were superior to most men. People don't count with you. Nothing counts with you but power. You use people. You climb on their backs. You can't mean that. No, I don't. You're right and I'm wrong. I'm wrong and you're right. And that's the end, is it? Yes, that's the end.